Jesus said in John 14 that he was the way, the truth, and the life. So this message today is by the way, as we're on the way through life. He tells us to watch and pray for good reason. He told his disciples in the garden when he went in the garden of Gethsemane to pray. He brought uh, Peter, James, and John with him a little bit further in. And he told them that he was very troubled. And he needed them to pray with him. He said, I'd like you to watch with me and pray with me. Quite a privilege to pray with God, Amen. don't you say? a privilege. I think he invites us all to pray with him, not just pray to him. We are uh, counseled to pray to God. He taught us how to pray. Very short pattern of prayer he gave us. He gave his disciples when they asked him to teach them, the followers, Rabbi, teach us to pray. And he gave us a very good pattern of prayer that we should pray every day. Not that we would recite that scripture, although it is a wonderful uh, memorization of scripture, but it is a pattern of prayer to dwell on, meditate on, and converse with God. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said it. They asked him, he gave them an answer. A very precise, important, profound pattern of prayer. I'm going to talk about four very profound statements that Jesus made. He made many, many statements, and the disciples wrote them down. But it was also said that if we wrote everything down, the very books wouldn't hold everything he said. He was a very, very profound, interesting person. They said, never a man spoke like this. He drew crowds of thousands, tens of thousands of people were moved and touched by this man called Emmanuel, God with us. Yes. No wonder never a man spoke like this. He was God in the flesh. He was here ministering in human form, not just spiritual anymore, not speaking out of a burning bush or out of thin air, but human form. He was God in the flesh. So he wanted to show us the way, the truth, and daily living, all the way up to 2023. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you even to the end of the age. I'll be with you, leading you and guiding you. Amen. I'm going to come to you in the form of the Holy Spirit, he said. I'm not going to leave you comfortless or orphans. I will come to you. I will lead you and guide you. I will bring to your remembrance the things that I have spoken to you and you've read in your Bible. When you need it, I'll give it to you. Amen. You don't have to try and worry about what you're going to say if you're brought before the magistrate or the law that says you can't do this or that in Jesus' name anymore. I'll give you the words to say, so don't worry. Just get into the book. Read my words. Hide them inside your heart. So Jesus says, I'm the way. Who's he telling this to? He's telling this to followers of his who are following him close by for years. And he said he's going away but coming back again. And he told them that they know the way, where he's going and know the way to get there. And their retort back to him was, we don't know where you're going or how to get there. That's why Jesus said the most important, the most important statements in Scripture. I am the way the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father or goes to glory except through me. That's why. 
people don't want to follow him today. Other religions don't want any part of him because he said he is the only way to the Father. Pretty profound statement. So, there's a lot of people out there that don't know the way. Just like Philip said, I don't know the way. And he was a follower. How many out there don't know the way? But they would know the way if we told them. And they would follow them. Who would? John 18, 37, he says, those that are of the truth will hear my voice. How are they going to hear his voice? They're walking around out there in the world. They're of the truth inside, but they're of the world. They're worldly. I was that way for many, many years. I followed the way of the world. But inside my heart of hearts, I was of the truth. And so when this, the truth was spoken to me, I was drawn to it like a moth to a flame. I couldn't get enough. And when I got the invitation to come to his little church, I followed the invitation and I heard from the word that I was a sinner and I needed to repent and follow Jesus. Follow him all the way. Not just part of the way. Not that we don't stumble, not that we don't fall, not that we don't wonder sometimes where we are in the maze of life, but turning to Jesus, he'll show us the way. Yes, he will. Do we really know everyone, even followers? Do we know their heart of hearts? Do we know what they're going through? Sometimes we can hide it pretty good. We can hide our pain, emotional, spiritual, even physical. Oh, I didn't know you were going through that. I didn't know that was a big distressor for you. How am I going to know about that? Unless we get on a one on one with somebody, followers, fellowshippers, in the boat rowing together. To glory. Yes. Bear one another's burdens. Find out what's going on in someone's life. We don't need to know all the nitty gritty details and so on, but is there something that would cause them to step out or out of the bullseye? You see, sin, one of the definitions of sin <coughs> is missing the mark or the bullseye. Just a little itty bitty bit off and you're out. You're in trespass zone. Jesus said, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Watch, eyes alert, knowing where you are, walking circumspectly. What am I doing here? What am I thinking? What am I saying? Pray that you may not enter into, into, into. Not stand in the, on the outside of temptation, where the tempter is there, he's coming and he's trying to tempt us to do this or that. But lest ye enter into temptation. After Jesus said that, the disciples fell asleep. Peter, the one that he had given the keys to the kingdom of all people, right after that entered into temptation because he fell asleep and forgot to watch and pray. He was a disciple, a follower of Jesus. He cursed and he denied God. He denied Jesus three times. Jesus said, I have prayed for you, Peter. That when you're converted, when you come back and you're strengthened, I want you to strengthen the brethren. Why did he say that? Because we all need strength. Yes, we do. We need the Lord. We need a, one another to talk about Jesus, like in your song there. Talk about it. 
Tell them about what you're going through or what you've been through. Matthew chapter 7. Pretty powerful passage of scripture. Jesus said this. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. I'll stop there for a moment. On a daily basis, do we pray thy will be done on earth, in earth, in earthen vessels, as it is in heaven? Didn't Jesus say, when ye pray, say, our Father in heaven, how that means that word means unprofane meaning i don't want to profane your name i don't want to be as a follower of jesus christ go out and do something that someone would see as a blatant sin and say well there goes a good christian how is jesus working for you today hmm? that would be profaning the name of the lord christian Jesus' name. God is Savior. How's that working for you? So he says, Thy will be done in earth. What's God's will for me? Not to miss the mark. Not to miss the mark. Yes, we are sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but we don't need to continue sinning and be a sinner. On a daily basis, Jesus said, we would pray, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive me my trespasses when I've stepped out of the bullseye. I'm trespassing. I'm in a place I shouldn't be. I'm trespassing in the world. I don't belong there. I'm a kingdom's kid. I'm in the kingdom. What am I doing? Trespassing in the world. And they'll bring you up short too, the world will. They'll give it to you. They'll put it on the tabloid, in the newspapers. So it's important to pray thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. So then he goes on to say in verse 22, many will say, I don't want to be part of the many. I don't want to be in the many. I want to be with the chosen few on the narrow road, not the wide one that leads to destruction, but the narrow one that leads unto life eternal. So many will say to me in that day, there's coming a day. Today is a day of salvation. Let's make it through the day. But we don't know if we're going to even make it through the day. Hmm. Important words here, Jesus is saying to the many. Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to here? Is he talking to the world? The worldly? No, he's talking to church people. He's talking to church folks right here. Followers of God. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? That's why I know he's talking to church people. Because they're going out there prophesying in Jesus' name. Many will say that. Many will cast out demons in Jesus' name. How do they have that power? Huh. They, have power? they have power to cast out demons in Jesus' name. They are praying. These could be priests. They could be ministers. They could be lay people in the church. Choir members. Choir leaders. I say that because I've known some. Personally. I mean, this is not hearsay. Mm -hmm. 
We cast out demons in your name and we've done many wonders, miracles in your name, Jesus. Who's he talking to here? The church. Us. I'm scared. This is a scary scripture here. Mm -hmm. One of the scariest scriptures I know. People are walking around dressed up. They look, they look great. They're a whited sepulcher and inside is they are filled up with dead man's bones. That's what Jesus said to the religious leaders of that day. I don't want to be one of these men. And then I will declare to you, he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice iniquity, willful sin. Oh, I know, I know this is wrong, but God loves me, Jesus loves me, this I know. He'll never leave me or forsake me. I've got all kinds of scripture memorized, but I just like to do this one thing. And I know this one thing speaks to millions. It spoke to me. I was one of these. That only had a couple. How many beers did you have last night that you're all hung over today? Ah, just had a couple. That's not the rest of the story, is it? The couple was really 12 or 13 or 14, and maybe a couple shots of whiskey. Huh? So there's two sins I have just committed that were erroneously so huge that they would put me in hell. Scripture tells us that a drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of God. He also says that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. So I've just committed to a lie and I got so drunk, couldn't even remember last night how many beers I drank. And probably while I was drunk, I said a whole lot of things to some people that I shouldn't have said, some more sins. I probably looked at some people that I shouldn't have looked at the way I looked at and thought some of the thoughts that I shouldn't have thought and therefore, sinned again, Jesus said, if you look at, uh, depending on the gender, if you're a male looking at a female with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery or fornication. And the Bible says fornicators or adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Who's he speaking to here? The church. There's a lot of people in the church that get drunk every week. And they don't think it's a sin. They don't think that they're just going to heaven. I'm a good old boy around the campfire. How are they going to know that they need to talk to Jesus about this? And Jesus will say, neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. Amen. You don't need to be uh, attached to this sin that you're bound to. I have come to set the captive free. Open prison doors. Amen. We know people that are locked in this. It's our job, our responsibility, our privilege to tell them the truth. I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I can show you the life. You think you're living the life. But the end of that is death. So Jesus said, therefore, in verse 24, whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever hears these sayings of mine, he's talking to the church, and does them, I will liken him a wise man. Somebody prayed this morning for wisdom. If you don't have wisdom, the Bible says pray for it. Ask for it in your prayers. They don't have to be the same old redundant prayers. Something new every day. Ask for it.
for it. He built his house on the rock. This rock is Jesus. Build your house on the rock. The foundation is sure. He said he's the truth. He's not lying. Build your house on the rock. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Don't go out and get drunk. Don't go out and think these thoughts. Don't, don't go out and do this or that. Don't trespass. Don't step out into the world and trespass in the world. Stay in the bullseye. Hallelujah. And if we sin, we have an advocate, a mediator with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who knew no sin, yes. who became sin for us. He took our sin, the sin that I would sin. He took that away. He took it. If I will get if I would but release it to him. Forgive my trespasses, Lord, as you give me my daily bread. And I'll forgive those guys who trespass against me. Jesus went so far as to say after that, if you don't forgive those who have trespassed against you, I won't forgive you either. Powerful, profound statements by Jesus. <clears throat> Yet do we hear those the people tell us. So let's be mindful of the impact of some of the just profound statements by Jesus, what he says. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. What, does, what do we do in prayer? What does prayer do for us? Does God need to hear all the things that we ask him and so on? No, he knows everything before we even ask him. But he wants us to get it out so we can hear ourselves in what we think we need or want. And he'll give us our daily bread what we need. Watch and pray. Bless you. Enter into temptation. Well, those are four little scriptures there we can ponder. I, I do all the time. <laughs> they come back to me all the time. There's a lot of scriptures Jesus said that we can ponder. And what are they all about? They're about the will of God. Thy will be done in earth. His will is that we would repent. Sinner, repent. Yes. The one who is constantly in sin, yes. But if we sin, John said, if we sin, boy, can we get out and get through a day without a sin? Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Willful sin, that's the one that's a bad one iniquity. That's what he's talking about there. In the church, iniquity. We're the light. We need to shine the light on out. Just shine your light. Praise God. And pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for wisdom. It's not easy telling somebody they're messing up. Huh? Try it. <laughs> Try it. Not easy. The power of God can do it. Infilling of the Holy Spirit can do it. It's the power of God unto salvation. That person is not saved. If they're living in sin, God gives you the power of God to salvation, the gospel message. Yes, Jesus loves you. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. I was a flat-out sinner. Many, 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 many sins. Over and over and over. Willful, absolutely. God has the power to change that person's life. Yes, he does. Just through the spoken word. I heard the word, and I wanted to go to that church. And when I got in that church, I was so happy. And when they said, anybody need to be baptized? You want to be baptized? I want to be baptized. Anybody want to be filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues? I want that. Why? Because it says so in the Bible. That's why. It wasn't because somebody said so. A lot of people say a lot of stuff. I want to follow the truth. 
Amen. Jesus said, it's expedient for me to go away. It's very necessary so that the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, can come into you. Those are Jesus' words, not mine. Not somebody else saying, well, you need this and that. No. Jesus said, you need this. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. We are not going to make it. We're going to fall asleep next to a tree or a rock. I heard a story about this fellow. He was going out west to, to a conference. He was a religious guy. Heading out there to a conference. And he got out there to Cheyenne, Buffalo, and Wyoming, and right in the foothills there in the buttes and the beautiful plateaus. And he got up there and got by a campsite and set his camp and he looked up there at that nice little butte up there and he said, I'm going to get up there and get a good view of everything out there. Maybe do some praying. Huh? So sure enough, he did. He climbed up there pretty hard, got up just before sunset. He's a flatlander, so he's not used to climbing mountains. But he got up there, got kind of close to the edge and he sat down by a big rock, pondering. Sure enough, he fell asleep. Fell asleep, as we do when we're tired. But we all don't walk in our sleep, and this poor guy walked in his sleep. He got up and he started walking the wrong direction. Just as he was stepping out into thin air, he woke up. Oh my, he did a 180 spin and he fell off the cliff and he grabbed a hold of some roots that were overhanging there and he's hanging on for dear life. And he's screaming, anybody out there, help me. Is anybody out there, help me. Then it came to him to pray to God. He said, oh God, if you're real. Help me, help me. And he heard the still small voice. Son, trust me. Just trust me and let go. And he hollered, is there anybody else out there? Help me, <laughs> help me. <laughs> That's called the epitome of searing your conscience. Mm -hmm. Searing your conscience. You think you're going to pray, but the Lord talks to you and you say, is there anybody else? Is there any other way? No, there's not. We've got it. We've got it. So it's shining. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Lord, bless everyone. In Jesus' name.